there is almost 100 creatures to tame on Ragnarok. Besides the map being beautiful, it seemed like the perfect place for this 100 day challenge. I am going to tame every creature that's tameable on this map, but in a different way I haven't seen done before. I am going to be taming the creatures in the order the arc devs intended, meaning in the order in which the saddles can be unlocked. In an attempt to be somewhat of a taming guide, I also wanted to challenge myself by setting up some rules. Every creature that spawns above level 100 must be tamed at at least level 100 or higher. If the creature requires a saddle, I have to tame them in the order in which the saddle engram is unlocked. This makes power leveling to a certain level to obtain a saddle impossible, specifically getting a flyer that can pick up most creatures. I'm also setting limits of when I'm allowed to tame certain creatures that don't require saddles. By the end of this challenge, I have to have at least one of every permanent tameable creature by the end of 100 days. I hope I don't regret these rules. You can pause to look at the specifics. My name is Phoenix Mech, and this is 100 days of how to tame all the creatures in Ark Ragnarok. Day 1. I started off my task of taming all of Ragnarok's tameable creatures in Jungle 1, immediately started crafting a few of the basics, and quickly gained a few levels. I figured I'd work my way over to Blue Obelisk as it's a great area to start in. There's resources there along with a chance of obtaining metal tools and weapons early on. As I crafted and made my way there, I soon encountered my first dino, a level 55 dilo. Not what I was looking for, plus we needed to get the hide, so I fought it. Feeling pretty good, I kept moving and moments later I found a 130 dialo. On instinct, I started to fight it, then had the brilliant idea to tame it since it was above the level I was looking for. Having nothing but my fists, I thought I could knock it out. Nope, it was bad. It killed me. I spawned back and tried to lead him off the cliff so I could get my stuff back. But he had some sticky feet. Screw this, I'm just running around. Yet to run into another dialo. With my wounds still fresh, I didn't even try to fight this one until I reached the bottom. She ended up being a 145, but I learned my lesson the first time and just decided to kill it. I really almost died again, but luckily I was the victor. Even with my broken leg, I was determined to get the blue obelisk. I spotted a level 100 moss chops that wanted to be tamed with prime fish meat. This would be a great first tame, and I figured surrounded by a big ocean, there's got to be tons of sharks around, right? I broke open some crates first and got a metal hatchet, a pike, crossbow, along with some arrows. Found my shark and started shooting. He didn't seem to care at all and disappeared. I spent a lot more time than I wanted to looking for this stupid thing. Eventually I gave up and I just couldn't believe that there was not another single shark that I wanted to eat me in this ocean. I started putting down a few things to get some narcotics going and food. I was having issues with the campfires as they wouldn't light and although maybe it was something wrong with my game, I repositioned them and then they worked okay. I think it was too close to the water or something. I kept gathering and crafting through the night to gain levels. I started making myself a small base, wasn't sure if I was going to stay here forever, but it'll do for now. Day 2, I built myself a raft and I went looking for that shark again. I was not doing so great, so this time I altogether abandoned the idea of killing the shark and taming the moss chops. made a forge instead and started to smelt some metal to get a smithy. As I was searching for creatures and gathering in the direction of the moss chops, I saw him again. Figured I'd just run up on him to just think about what could have been, then come to my surprise he didn't want prime fish meat anymore. But mayo berries! I have those, so quickly I put the berries in a last slot and tamed him up. Yay, good boy! That shark was a turd and would have tasted bad anyway. Named him number one and started gathering even more with him. I thought he had really cool coloring, but it could also be it was the first tame of this challenge and I had named him and now I was attached. I kept gathering metal while I searched for more creatures and I also plopped a couple of other things in my base. There's a bunch of rich metal nodes around Blue Obelisk, so it made it easy to gather a lot. Night was soon coming and I hadn't seen anything really up until I went up on the hill and found a 135 dodo. I thought for a moment about the best way to tame this guy since dodos can be killed pretty easy with weapons. So I punched it out and fed it some berries and named it tough guy. I mean he tried to get it for a sec. I made a few crop plops after to start growing some veggies. Day 3 I was still looking for a pig to this day so I set out this morning to find one and found a female dodo. I decided to tame up so tough guy can have a girlfriend. I looked up and down the beach finding nothing but dodos. So I finally went up the hill in front of my house and found a ton of dinos, but none of the ones I was looking for, so I killed the ones I could for some hide and meat. There were a few trash birds nearby, so I thought I could find some fish in the stream, and there was none. I didn't want to spend too much time in one place on foot, since I didn't want to burn the daylight. So I headed back thinking I should take the boat out. On my way back, I found a 145 Listosaurus, who was orange too. She's a passive tame that eats rare flowers. I knew I had some back in my base, but the beaches around Blue Obelisk have them so you can just pick them. 
Got my third tame on day three. At this point, I figured if I can get a tame a day, I'll be able to tame all the creatures in time. If I can find more, then better yet. I named her Bella because that's just always what I called these things. I don't know why, it just looks like a Bella. She took forever to get back to base, so I figured I'd get this green drop while I waited for her. Joke's on me, it wasn't down yet. So I gathered more stuff waiting for her and couldn't find her. I really thought I lost a tame that I barely had for two minutes, but she was hiding behind the house. Oh, and the drop was useless for me. Going down the beach, I found some Pegamasses I wanted to tame. But without a spyglass, I'd just have to let them pick my pockets and hope they were the level I was looking for. Nope. They normally steal what's in your last slot and will take the whole stack. So if you want to tame one of these little turds, put a small stack of berries. Because it doesn't matter if it's 100 or 20, it's about how many times they pickpocket you. I'd still have to find a higher level, but decided this one could stay with us for now. Killed everything I could find on the beach until I came across a level 100 Parasaur. We weren't allowed to tame him yet because we had to find the Fiomia first. I swear, any other time, I would've ran into a pig at least 20 times by now. I mean, I guess they're an elephant. I don't know. Elephant, pig. I went back up the hill, and two over 100 level compies came at me, so I figured I'd tame them both. They're easy to knock out, but their turpor goes down so fast that I had to have a lot of berries or narcotics. I didn't want to waste narcotics on them, since you can either punch or shoot them again. It does affect taming effectiveness, so this is not recommended if you actually care about the effectiveness and the levels of the tame. I couldn't keep them both down, so I killed the one. Now, I've always thrown prime meat in there due to their fast torpor drop. They eat fish. You serious? I couldn't figure out at the time why this wasn't working, and that's why. So I just ended up killing it, so that's cool. Time will smash. Since we were getting more dinos to worry about, I spent the night building up a perimeter. Day 4. I took number one out to help me gather more materials for spark powder, narcotics, and bullets. While things were crafting, I took a look down the beach again and went up the path I haven't gone to yet. Avoiding the trash birds, I found a few trikes in a pretty open terrain, one of them being the perfect 150. I'm coming back for you later. There were dilos on the beach and I figured I could tame one if it presented itself. I kept looking for things that didn't need a saddle to tame and finally found my first pig. Oh, come on! That would have been too perfect, right? Ugh. Just for that, you have to die. Yeah, I know your little, your little sweet face, but maybe you'll level up like a Pokemon. Nope, you did not. But I did. I found another disrespectful dino and then a weird <laughs> dodo. <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? <laughs> I still couldn't believe I couldn't find any pigs. On my way back home, I right. found a 145 dilo. Her friend attacked me, so I took her out and then fed her to the Dilo, so they'll always be together. I brought her back to base and named her Orange again since we got another Orange Dino. I gathered some berries and did some base stuff, keeping on the lookout for some fish to kill. I had a purple drop, which contained a scope, and got a couple of forges so I could smell even more metal. I always try to have wood burning, so I have lots of charcoal for ammo later when I can craft it. Day 5 repaired everything, grabbed my pistol, and decided to take the raft out to go along the beach further. I'd been running around so far, and I didn't want to be in a place where I needed to run and couldn't. I investigated Little Rock Island and tried saving a trike on its own little island, but it didn't work. I found a new field and hoped there were pigs. The carna waited to greet me and I dispatched him quickly. I saw a pig off in the distance, carefully making its way over. Nope. Got back on the raft and headed up more. And saw Rex. And turned back around. I can't deal with that just yet. Sailed past where I was and a whole lot of stuff on the beach. I'm glad I missed that. I made my way to the stream in front of my base and finally found some fish to kill. The pego fell off and I almost considered leaving it. I wanted to try taming a trash bird, but basically would have to bowl it and hope it was a high level. And I kind of didn't want to spend a ton of time on that. Where were all the pigs? I got off the raft and took a little look around. Then it finally happened. I found a 145 Fiomia. I bullied him and proceeded to knock him out. I got a little worried he was going to die, and then the bullet He's broke and I had to chase him. Not my ideal way of taming. Chase you into oblivion. When I was making the saddles, some raptors attacked us. What is that? Are you serious? And the pig killed one, and I shot the other. Oh my god. It's ridiculous. I popped the, the saddle on and rode him back to base, <laughs> right. naming him the best. I was really never so excited to tame a pig in my life. Alright, I'm gonna get you all the berries you want. This meant I could tame the next saddle in my list, the Parasaur. 
I named him Lurker and immediately put him to work when this happened. But I'm living the real arc, he said. I, what happened? It's huge. I threw my book at it. Oh, I killed it. Did you kill it? Yes. You sure? Yes. It's all crumpled. It's like this. Kill it. You gotta smush it more. No, it's dead. <laughs> I need to go look at it. This, okay. with, its, with its legs, it's my no, I swear to God. Oh, it was this big. God, I swear it was this big. It looks small enough. Dude, I never started tapping. Day six. Since I had a mobile backpack now, I mainly used him to gather more resources, mostly metal, and I figured I was a little ahead of schedule to start crafting pieces for a taming boat. Without a flyer and without some dinos not being able to be bullied, I would need a mobile pen to go around to the different areas of the map. I was gathering around the base, so I check up on the crops and craft anything I could, such as bullets or narcotics. I mined all the metal in the area, so this took a good part of the day. Day 7. Not much different than the day before, I continued to gather and craft and build. I thought I had calculated the amount of pieces I need, but I changed up the build a little bit, which is usually what happens when I build. I used to build taming pens with dino gates, but the structures aren't allowed anymore, so it results in a change of design. I finished up the walls, ramps, and ceilings. I had placed everything in there that I needed to be able to gather resources, repair, and craft if necessary. Even had a little kitchen for making kibble in case I came across any eggs. I wasn't too worried about the turtles, but the next tame I'd have after that, so I'd have to make sure I had a workable ship. Day 8. I was tired of living my life without knowing the wild dino levels, so I needed to go find some crystal. Which was kind of hard without a flyer. Fortunately, I knew of one spot that had some crystal. Not a lot, but enough for a spyglass. Getting a spyglass would keep me safer and allow me to save more time because I wouldn't have to constantly run up to everything I saw. I told everyone to behave while I was gone and I set off. So this was my location on the map. There is literally one crystal node here. You'll see this weird rock structure and it's hidden between the rocks. I could see everything now. And it felt great. Also, found some turtles to try the boat on. And it worked! I killed the one and I couldn't figure out where the other one was attacking me from. Turns out it was a ninja turtle and this guy was on the roof of my boat. So I shot at it a little before it fell off and did this. Hmm, guess he had the brain worms. I made another forge and figured while I was out here, I'd go on a resource run. I went to a place where you can find some silica pearls and obsidian along with some metal. I stayed till night before heading back. I got spooked on my way back because I heard a roar and I thought something big was going to eat me. It was a megalodon. I thought it was aggro to me, but it was actually fighting turtles. One being a 150. I watched them for a bit under the moon and thought about helping it before I was like, eh, they got this and I went home. Day 9. I saw a couple of things worth taming, so I unloaded some of the stuff, and I took care of the base stuff and went back out. I thought I would have a turtle by now, but wasn't too worried because they were everywhere. Seems like I was only getting 95s though. Also, I couldn't find that 150 and figure the shark just won. I got out at one point and tried to open some crates when I spotted a 130 oviraptor. I actually spotted them on my way back the other day, but I didn't have any eggs on me, so I just kept going. I remembered to bring some today. These guys are easy enough to tame, you just bowl them and trank them out. They are skittish though, so they can run away if they get spooked. Of course, I whiffed the first one and I got him on the second. Knocked him out and gave him some dodo eggs. Normally, the bigger the egg, the faster they tame, so these are probably the worst eggs to do it with, but they were the only ones I had. He was chilling around a bunch of dilos when I found him, so I just named him Dilo. Thought maybe I should look for turtles closer to my base since the pen contained the oviraptor and I still didn't have a way to get him out unless I broke the wall. And I didn't feel like doing that for something so tiny. I was mad. I thought he could fit through the doorway, but I guess not. I was hoping I could clip him out of the boat. The way rafts work in Ark, no matter what you build on them, if living things collide with other things such as rocks, they'll end up getting pushed out by it. Usually super inconvenient, but good for this time. After bringing him back, I weighted him down and set him on wander. Obi Raptors boost egg production of all your egg producing dinos. The egg icons indicate they're affected. I went up the hill to look for turtles and also brought some fish along just in case any compies or trash birds came along. All the dinos were gone. It was quiet and kind of spooky. Eventually I found another 95 and a few that were low. Then it started to storm, which I ain't gonna lie, it scared me. I got jumped by raptors not too far from here and with the storm I couldn't hear anything. So I could definitely get taken out. I can't even hear if anything's chasing me. So I just headed back to the beach. 
I looked up and down, there was nothing. When the rain stopped, I could check out the other area I found turtles in before. Wasn't much there. And then I think I figured out why. There was a Rex eating everything. I don't think they can wander in my base, but I don't know. I found some weird stuff. I came into the call and they needed me. I had the idea to craft some cryopods, but you need polymer for that. And for that, you need a fabricator. I had enough crystal for it, but cementing paste was something I needed to kill more turtles for that. Works for me. I need higher levels to spawn in anyway. What the f is that? It's totally <laughs> so angry. It's so slow and menacing. It's scary. This big ass bug. We did it. I think I found a lot of these. This guy is so slow. <laughs> Still time to do other stuff. It's gonna cost too many bullets. Day 10. I've been thinking about moving the past couple days in preparation for some upcoming teams. Not having a flyer definitely makes things harder, and it makes it so I have to travel by boat. The map is big, and it takes a lot of time to get in between places. This is the fastest way for us now. I loaded up a few more things in the base and set off looking for a new place to live as well as possibly finding a turtle. And I found one right along these rock islands. I was like, okay, let's put the trap to use. And while I was leading her in, a trash bird attacked me and gave my turtle a light brain worms. It flew away, so I had to reset it and lure it back in. Safely inside, I tranked it out. I checked the dolphins in the area and forgot they weren't next on the list and this trash bird was, so I tried to tame it. You get it? I did. I killed it. Probably should have yep. waited more in uh, between shots. I waved to the island trike as I went by and kept on my way. Sailed past the nasty swamp. Mm -mm. When I had arrived at my location, I tried to clip Tina out, and she arrived on my side. So that was cool. Still, she ended up in here. I left her for the time being and did a quick run around. This island had nothing but herbivores and had some ruins so I could make everything into a base. Enough space for the dinos and safe. Its location was out of the way, but so is everything on this map. There were metal nodes and the other islands had some obsidian. This would do nicely. I harvested a bunch of metal and smelt it throughout the night. Day 11. I had to bring the other dinos to this new spot, but without cryopods, I'd have to do it the old school way. So when morning came, I fast traveled to Blue Obelisk and got to work building a transport boat. It didn't have to be anything fancy, just basically a platform large enough for all the dinos. When I was done, I loaded up all the dinos. Also, gathered up anything else I thought I would need. Collecting everything out of the base, I left Nope to guard it. So, I have a love-hate with boats, and this was one of those hate moments. The dinos kept drifting off to the side, and it was very annoying. Once everyone was on, we properly set off. With determination in our eyes, we were off on the long voyage to our home. It was super nerve-wracking. They all kept drifting to the right, and at one point, I thought I lost tough guy. We made it, yay. Drift this way. Yeah. Uh, okay. Where, where were you hiding? Jeez, made me so nervous. Alright. <laughs> okay, let's get everybody out now. Day 12. I was going to go out this day, and I realized I reached level 62, so I could make trank darts now, which would make taming a little easier. I was going to stay and do base things while I made the darts. I got crops going again, so I spent a little time gathering the materials and getting a garden going. A lot of the days are spent like this, crafting narcotics, gunpowder, and bullets while I gather and do base things. I feel like I'm spending a lot of time on it now, but hopefully it will pay off later. Since I'm taming so much, I need all of those things. It's a good habit to have while this game is always keep crafting or gathering. Normally in these times, I just go AFK, but I can't because of the time crunch. The next tame is a Moralitops, and I couldn't remember if it can fit into a two square space because they're pretty big, so I made the boat one space bigger. When I was done with my chores, I sailed towards the desert biome through the night. Day 13. First Moralitops I see alone on an island and it's a 145. Lucky. I checked the surrounding area, nothing bad was around in the immediate area. 
Now these guys run when they're alone, so I was hoping if I pulled up, I could shoot it between me and the boat and have it run into the opposite direction. I waited till it wandered back over and shot. It ran up halfway and then moved. So I guess we're doing this on foot. When they're alone, they flee, but if there's other ones around, they will attack. Then just ran it down on foot. It was annoying, but it all worked out. Do you really just go down in the water? I didn't want to go back to the boat, so I gave it berries from my pocket and some I picked. It worked. Brought it back to the boat and named it Dasani. After checking on the crops, I took Tina out into the water and tried to find some dolphins. She's the only tame I have that is kind of good in the water, and dolphins are normally friendly, but they really like it when you have tames. But she's so ungodly slow. I spotted a 130, but it was too far away, and I didn't want to go out with all those megalodons around. I searched and searched till it was too dark, too. Oh, that's a bad idea. Nope. Nope, nope. Day 14. I found some dolphins close to my base. Oh. These guys are a passive tame, so you just need to put food in your last slot. They eat meat. He had some buddies, so I tamed them up, too, just for extra backup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We could tame you guys, too. <laughs> So Named the high level Echo, made the rest of them saddles and brought them to a little underwater pen area. I was dreading going into the water without scuba or even a high oxygen, but we would have to go soon. Did some base stuff and then set up to find a packy. I went back to a location where I knew they were. I was cautious since the last time I was here there was a Rex, but it seemed to be gone now and there was just RG, so maybe they killed it, I don't know. I had to go through a couple packies. You have to be careful with these guys as they can knock you out. If you avoid their head, they're pretty easy to tame. You can just bowl and shrank them out. Don't hit them in the head, though, as it protects them and it doesn't really do much damage or torpor. I didn't bring the berries again, but it's okay. I just picked them. I was trying to keep an eye out for the RG that kept getting closer. Like, we needed to go, but I was too fat for the dino. Um, How's this even supposed to be a mount at level 14? Guess you gotta be naked. Have no weight. I decided on naming it Onyx back at the base. Now, there was a 145 trike around the base for a while. And when I went to go back for it, I only found this insulting level 15. I need to go find that one for five. Did you eat her? I was hoping for a freebie, but looks like we got to go looking tomorrow. Day 15. So before I set out to the surrounding area to look for a trike, I did some gathering and crops and chores, and this happened. <coughs> Wait, who are you? What? You were there this whole time? Okay. Uh, I'm going to team you then. It must have spawned in, or I really just didn't see it there before. I looked around to make sure there was any other trikes before shooting it. Ideally, I would have liked to left it in pen, but figured if I got up high enough, I could shoot it. Problem was, it was right underneath me. So I had to lead it into the pen anyway. Up. I let it in and got the attention of yep. its lovers, so I was oh, stuck I in between two angry trikes. Oh boy. This also was an idea, since I was trying not to shoot it in the head as the shots to the head are less effective on trikes. You want to try and hit the body with these guys. Once tamed up, his lover was angry he had converted, and I couldn't have her rampaging around my babies, so she had to go. I named him Knievel, and now we had an even better berry gatherer. The Morallotops is a good option for desert biomes and scorched earth, but the trike is a little bit faster. Wouldn't it be cool if these two had a baby? Hmm. Since taming the trike was what I planned on doing with the day, I had spent the rest of the day gathering up more metal and resources as the next few teams I had were all in the same area. The grind for narcotics is real, and at one point I found a trilobite where I could use some of its chitin for cementing base. That is the one thing I was incredibly low on. I made more crop plots to have more berries on the boat, and I was done gathering for the day, and I came back to this. Good job, guys. Turns out Echo and Co. have been slaughtering Megalodons. I honestly didn't think they'd last an attack, so this made me a little bit more confident about the team we had coming up underwater. While I was cooking up some prime fish meat, they were attacked two more times. I didn't want to take the chance of them possibly getting swarmed, so instead of sailing out to the desert, I chose to make a pen for them. Day 16. I already had the ruins to help, but I made some gates to seal it off. Usually I try to make things a little bit prettier, but I didn't have time for that. Okay. Well, it's ugly, but While I was working, we had a little visitor who wanted to be a part of the group. 
at 145, I couldn't say no. Unfortunately, I only had fish on hand, so I fed it and tracked it. Waited for a bit, but it never came back, so maybe another day. I should have got meat. I finished up the pen and look, happy little dolphins. Did a quick berry run with the trike to make more narcotics, and then I was off to the desert to search for raptors. And found them. I was very nervous about this since there were so many and also saber tooths around. A lot of things could go very wrong really quickly, so I actually logged out to think about this for a bit. Day 17. So this was an eventful day. I figured the best way to do this is just to pull up the boat and lure them in the pen. I had to pump myself up a little bit beforehand. And I was off. Doesn't always work out with this many, and in this case, that's what happened. Did we get any of the good ones? I got three in the first time and the others were attacking my boat. They couldn't get me so I was safe, but it was still very nerve wracking. I got rid of the lower levels and decided to try and count the 95. Yeah, I know it's not level 100, but just wait. I tried locating the others and the other one was swimming around and the other 135, I have no clue where it was. I tranked out the one in the pen so it would be a little safer for me to lure them in. The other 95 decided to bust through my back door. So if the hitbox works, then I'll do it. These guys don't need many trank darts to tame up. So it started to run. I ventured back out and found the 135, and that's when the other decided to come after me. Ran into the pen and we knocked him out. Right, so we just gotta do it one more time. Went back out to try and keep it out for sabers. Apparently my boat gives the dinos brain worms. So I just started shooting him outside. I was so worried about sabers at my butt, but the raptor finally decided to come after me and into the pen we go. Okay. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. Knocked it out and named nice. it Boss Raptor. Normally I would just bowl a raptor and knock it out, but there was too many to be able to do that. I made a little pen for them while I went to search for more things to tame. Now the next saddle on our list is the Equis. However, it doesn't require a saddle to be ridden. So I was treating this as a passive tame that didn't need a saddle. I did find a 130 on the beach though, and it looked fairly safe, but I was still worried as their taming method isn't the best. You have to sneak up behind them while you feed them a carrot and then proceed to feed them when prompted while they run around in all directions. Not safe, but I figured I'd give it a go. I ended up spooking it and decided to tame a Jerboa instead. Killed some bugs first and then punched it out. These guys always spawn at level 100, so we'll just pretend there's two zeros after it. Only had a moment to celebrate before a terror bird tried to come after me. I killed it and went back because I saw a 130 wolf all alone. This was crazy. They always have a pack around them, so I had to tame it. For some reason, it was rolling with terror birds. I did my same tactics again. So bad. The terror birds are very fast and ended up getting to me before Ooh. I could even get on the ramp. I took some bullets out, but all I really did was hold them up. I tried going through the back door and then they pushed me away from I eventually went up the ramp, luring one in and the other on top of my boat. I hadn't even realized the wolf was trapped in the pen. I killed the bird, shooting one in the foot to death. Then knocked out the wolf. Named her solo and brought her back to the rafters. She already had twice as much health in melee than the raptors, so I felt a little bit better about possibly taking these guys out. Day 18. I spent a little time on this day making their pen a little bit bigger. It wasn't pretty, but honestly, this was just in case I had to set it up as a little base outpost area. I knew of a little hidden area with some crystal nearby, so I decided to grab some before I set out to look for some scorpions. Going up the beach a little bit, I found a 135 scorpion. It was kind of separated from the group, but there was a saber tooth along with some titana boas. Scorpions are pretty slow and can be easily tamed, but with all the stuff around it worried me. I was thinking I could aggro into the open spot on the boat and it would walk right in while I was still in cover. Well, it didn't make it all the way, so I decided to bowl it so it didn't run away. Well, instead, it started to levitate, but that didn't stop me from knocking it out. Wonky arc mechanics. Sometimes when you move the boat, it'll keep a knocked out dino on it and decide to actually move it, which sort of worked too. Okay. 
care about. I will name you M List. Pretty name for a pretty girl. I decided to not push it any further and pack up the new diners I had and go back to base. Day 19. Was debating what my next move was as the next team on the list was the Protopticon, which needs rare mushrooms to tame. There were some beaver dams sort of close by, but also a lot of dangerous spawns such as alphas. I could go to the swamp and harvest, which is also a dangerous spot. The crops and dinos needed tending, so I did that while I thought about what I should do. At this point, I took the wolf out to harvest a little hide and possibly some trial bites. I found one. At back at base, I finished the night with the same old grind. Metal, narcotics, you know the drill by now. Once I was finished, I had decided the swamp would be the safer of the two, as I could just take myself and use the boat as cover to harvest. At least, that was the plan. Day 20. So I thought it'd be best if I go out myself. It's easy to lose dinos in the swamp, and I figured I can do it myself. I stayed pretty safe. I just pulled my boat up to the trees and harvested them while they were in my boat. It gave me plenty of wood, thatch, and rare mushrooms. I couldn't think of anything else I needed clay for, but I figured I'd grab some as well while I was there. I swung by the base to pick up Solo for some fur gathering and just some extra backup if I needed and proceeded to look for the Protopticon. I was fortunate and found an Ovis which I could harvest for wool and mutton. I found a few low level kangaroos before I found a higher level pair, 100 and 150. I was thinking of using the kangaroo as a mount to get around faster so I went with the 150. I used the billboard method for trapping, which is a good method for creatures that flee in wild directions. Also for creatures that couldn't be bullied. Now I couldn't remember if they aggro to you when they're in pairs, so I used the wolf to spook the other one away and tranked out the 150. Day 21. I knocked it out and fed it rare mushrooms, then it was tamed up. I was a little short on the saddle, so I decided to donate my hair to make this saddle with love and care. I named her Klepto for reasons you can see here. By the way, only the females can do this. Next was a Stegan. Oh, look, there just happened to be a 150 creeping and stomping around my base for like the past week. I went with using the boat as I had to make sure it was far enough away to not aggro the other Stegos or have any of the attack my own dinos. Took its good old time getting in. Be careful when taming Stegos as their attack has a huge range. I managed to stay in a spot where I could get some good headshots in. They take a lot of darts, so can't imagine this with anything lower. It was fed out with berries and I named it Creeper. Alright, there you go. They're probably our best berry gatherer right now, but very slow. Each one of the different plate stances is good for gathering a certain resource. Dang, look at this. I think I'll just use him to harvest the bushes around the base as it'll take way too long to do anything else. Day 22. I ended up going out and searching for furry things to kill with my direwolf. I got excited seeing a direwolf over here, hoping I could get a higher level male to breed with my female to make a pack who was a low level female. I needed furs, so I ate her. She didn't stand a chance. Didn't find any Ovis, but I found a few Protopicons that I could eat. Almost got about 200 furs so he could make some bug repellent. Couldn't make much, so wasn't sure if it would be enough for a Pachyronosaurus team, but it would help with the taming time. I wasn't sure how strong Klepto was, so I killed some dinos on the beach. Not as strong as I like, so we're just going to be speeding through the next area. I need to get some semantic base and possibly find some Patreonosaurus. I saw a few things I didn't really like on my way over to the beaver dams, lots of raptors, a few wrecks, and some alphas. Blech. I also found a pack of fancy trikes, but they were around way too many dangerous stuff to tame, plus the fact that they're slow, so I wouldn't have an easy time trying to get one back. I decided to just loot a few beaver dams and bounce. Day 23. Guess I should harvest these? Spent a good part of the day gathering metal and doing some base things, specifically putting some floors down to actually put down the fabricator. I've held off on building here as I'm pretty close in the level to get a lot of upgraded versions of things, so I was hoping that this would help. From looting the beaver dams, I used the paste to make some polymers since I decided it was time to make some cryopods. For that, I would need to go back to Blue Obelis. I wasn't thrilled about losing as much time as I have had in the past two days, but it would allow me to change my strategy in certain situations if I was just able to cryopod dinos. So I made the long journey back to Blue Obelis, made up some cryopods, then planned to find some patchy rhinos there. Day 24. I took my boat over to a spot where I knew I could spot some fancy trikes, and upon pulling up to the beach there was a handful of trash birds, with one being a high enough level. 
It was going to be hard to separate them, so I figured I could deal with this a little later. I took Klepto out to search for some patchy rhinos, and lucky enough, didn't have to go far before finding this lone 135 female close to a cliff. Usually my preference, because then I don't have to worry about my backside. I built a little 2x2 trap with a ramp to lure her in. These guys are like trikes, as you want to hit them in the body since hitting their head does little damage. Once down, they require bug repellent to tame. Depending on the rates, you may need narcotics to tame as their torpor drops quickly. I named her Stinky because of the pheromone clouds these dinos produce. Fancy so happy I have cryopods now. Okay, I don't need you right this now. This Diplo wanted to start with me? Me. Shame. It was 1.30. I doubt it'll still be here come time to tame them. <sighs> Gosh. Since I was over by some beaver dams, they were kind of close, so I decided to loot some. Uh, this didn't go as planned. Luckily, I made it back, since they won't aggro to your creature, just you, and Klepto was just fine. Of course, I had to try again, and things got a bit dicey. Beavers hit way too hard. I didn't even get as much as I did before. The situation was the same with the trash birds, so I figured I could possibly get one on the way back to base since it would take all night. I attempted to get one on the way back in the middle of the ocean, and it took my bullets. It was too dark for me to see where they were, so I made some more and attempted again, but failed. Seriously, this has never been so hard. Day 25. Now, I was dreading this day from the beginning of this challenge, almost to the point of skipping this one and giving myself a freebie. But I said, nope, we gotta do it in order. I had to tame a stupid manta. First off, they suck. They'd be cute if they weren't such a-holes, but they are, so they suck. Second, how in the world is someone who is level 28 going to get angler gel, which you can only get from angler fish or death worms? And get this, this is their only taming food. No kibble. I didn't have anything strong enough to beat a death worm, so into the ocean we go. I was a high enough level to be able to craft some scuba. I took all the dolphins out, and straight away, there was an alpha megalodon that started to aggro on us. Fantastic. No. So we had to take the long way around the island. Oh God, he's coming. Wait, we gotta go. Anglerfish are usually located in deeper yes. waters mid to like the ocean floor. I managed to find a couple which I had a hard time killing, but I got one. There were also some jellyfish closing in, so I harvested as much as I could stand before it's getting on my mount again. I didn't want to come back anytime soon. One of the dolphins kept circling and wasn't listening to the Fuck. whistles. And eventually the jellies got her. I was out. Okay. I took I the other you. dolphin and swam back as fast as I could and made it back safely. Now I had to search for one of these poopy mantas. Luckily they're everywhere so it didn't take long to find one. I took some bug repellent which makes mantas not aggro to you. They are a passive tame with an aggressive temperament so this makes it a little bit easier. At first I was thinking I could trap it to keep it from swimming off but that wasn't working too well since I couldn't place the gates down fast enough. I decided to scrap that idea and feed it. It didn't take much, and now I had this manta that was totally not worth it. I put it in the pen with the remaining dolphins and shamed it a little. Level 28 my butt, there's no way. So being about a quarter of the way through, I'd say we have three more dinos to lose by the time this is done. <sighs> Day 26. Next couple tames would be easy enough to tame, as it was just a matter of finding them. The islands near my base spawn galleys and iguanodons, so I looked there. I had a lot of low levels, so I had cleared them out a few times with the wolf, hoping for higher levels to spawn in. Circling around, I found an island that was pretty much all Dimorphodons and Dimetrodons. Figured since neither of these needed a saddle, why not tame both? Dimorphodons are easy enough to knock out. Problem is, any other will aggro around you for like ever. <laughs> They're very fast when attacking, so they can melt your HP pretty quickly. So the key here was to find a high enough level 1 isolated from the group. A couple of failed attempts until I found a level 100. It seemed like there were none around. Usually you can wait until they land a bola them, but this one flew right on my boat, making it an easy bola. 
I started to try and get out and I was wrong about it being alone. Another one attacked me. Luckily, it didn't take long to knock out. I tried to hide it from the other until it lost aggro, but it kept circling. It seemed to let me feed the down one, so it teamed up quickly with some cooked lamb. Thought I was good and on my way, and this other Dimorphodon kept attacking me. See what I mean? Ended up flying into a wall in my boat where I took them out. Day 27. Now to find a Dimetrodon. Found a 135 in a group. Thinking that was the only one I could find, I started moving the boat to them, but ended up finding a level 100 in the water. There was less around this one, so I tried to aggro it onto the boat. Wasn't too smooth at first, but eventually got him along, along with his girlfriend. They destroyed my bed, but I got him down. They have high torpor, so it's recommended to use trank darts, since a crossbow will likely kill them. Fed them some cooked lamb, paying attention to the torpor as it goes down super fast. He's grumpy. It's a good thing we have one of these guys now, in case I want to hatch any eggs, since at this point I wasn't sure how much farming I could get done for some higher end structures. I headed back to where I cleared everything out, and had to clear out two more times before I found a 140 Gallimimus. You can't bolo these guys anymore or pick them up with most flyers. They're too skittish and fast to trap with billboards or gates, so I would have to lead it into a pen. And the only way to do that is with rare flowers. Rare flowers make normally passive or docile creatures aggro to you. You have to make sure everything else in the area is either cleared out or far enough away not to aggro if you don't want them attacking you too. The effects last for 10 seconds, so you might have to eat a few depending on how far you're kiting it. Once in the pen, I cryopoded a wolf and started to trank it out. You have to try and hit it in the head for double torpor, as these guys have very low health. Feed it berries, and now we got a speedy feet. Luckily, iguanodons spawned in the same area, and there was a 145 hanging around the far island. You can bowl with them, but higher levels might break free before you're done. They'll aggro when attack, so you can just lead it into the pen, and you know the drill. Trank, feed, named it, and cryopod. Day 28. Named the Dimorphodon Chompers, by the way, seemed like a fitting name. I was having some trouble with eggs for kibble at my base, and I wasn't sure if it was due to the rates or really not me staying around the base. Normally, you have to be in render range for things to work, so this could have been it. The raptors hadn't laid any eggs yet, and I figured I would get another moss chop so I can have large eggs. Unloaded the cryopod dinos and found a female moss chop who wanted rare mushrooms. Alright, now hopefully we get some eggs. I also figured I can get a couple beer barrels going for when I wanted to tame the calicotheriums. I didn't want to waste what little crystal I had on jars, but I needed it to be done. Started working on kibble and can make a couple simple and regular, but nothing else. At this point, anything that needs basic kibble can just be came with regular food. Once everything was ready, I took the wolf and kangaroo and sailed off. I had two choices here. I could go on land and it would be shorter, but more dangerous. Or sail around to Red Obelisk. It was safer, but longer. I went with the latter, hoping it was the right choice. It's hard hitting massive amount of resources right now without flyers or fast dinos, but I was thinking of upgrading to a motorboat for speed, but it was so expensive. I knew where to get some black pearls, but the amount of metal and polymer was a little tough right now. I was very close to getting a flyer, so do I spend time and resources on a boat, or make up for the time once I'm a little faster? I considered uploading to the obelisk as well, but I couldn't think of a consistent way for me to get back to base. I had a long ride ahead and plenty of time to think about it. Day 29. I stopped a few times along the way to look at the levels of different upcoming dinos of possible tames, such as vultures, but no real opportunities presented themselves. A lot of these dinos would probably be dead by the time I got back anyway. It took me almost a full in-game day to get to the redwoods, but I figured this would have the most population of deer, and then the snow biome was right there. I barely found any, and the ones I did were low level until night came and I found a 145 female Megaloceros. The area was actually pretty safe, so I just bowled here there. I considered building a gate around just in case the bola broke, but it's usually okay. And of course, not this time. She took off like lightning. The females are faster than the males, but they're not very good swimmers. I chased her into the water where I knocked her out. She was kind of deep, but I gave her some berries and hoped for the best. I was just waiting for something to attack her or me and was on the edge the whole time. Luckily enough, she was okay. She just took a nap and ate underwater. So I named her Mermaid. Maybe could change her name to Ariel or something. I don't know. Put her away and was off. Day 30. The next tame was also a ridiculous tame. Not because of the creatures, since they're actually useful, but the level at which they're unlocked. 
Level 31. You're supposed to be able to travel to the snow biome where everything hates each other and it's a huge poop storm of teeth and rage. Not to mention Ragnarok's snow is completely awful. Even with fur armor, it isn't survivable unless a higher quality of armor, along with possible bruise or even an otter. I only had primitives, so my best bet was to stay on the edges, kind of like I've been doing it and hope I find what I'm looking for. The area I parked was right where the redwoods and the highlands meet, so it wouldn't be a long travel to the snow biome. Except for a giga being in the ray. And it just laid an egg. If I had a stronger mount, I'd totally scoop it up. But right now, Klepto is our most versatile, speedy mount right now. So I went around further on the beach. Found a sheep party. Too bad I didn't have any sweet veggie cake. The kangaroo's jumps made it easy to traverse the cliff and quickly get to the snow biome. On my way over, I kept an eye out for any horses I could possibly tame. Once in the snow biome, I really couldn't go too far in without freezing in full armor, so I was stuck in the edges. Fortunately, mammoth spawns are plentiful in the snow, and I was able to find two high levels. Mammoths will attack in groups, so isolating the one I wanted or at least dwindling down the numbers would help. I laid down a trap I had to slightly improvise due to the terrain. It was stupid bright and I could barely see what I was laying down. I brought out the wolf and took out the one that could be a problem. Eventually, the mammoth separated enough that the only one that I wanted was the only one left. I shot it off the back of the wolf. They're very slow, so I had time to kill the one and get back into position where it dropped in. I was having issues with the hitbox, but eventually it went down. Didn't have kibble, so I fed some berries and killed some woolly rhinos while it tamed up. I need the horns for later. Didn't get much, but it might be enough. Didn't really take a look at it since the snow is just like the water for me and I just wanted to be out of there. Named him Chunky and Bounce. On my way back, I looked for a horse and possibly a Diplo to tame since it was next, but found a Dung Beetle to tame. I had a couple of bad things around, so I took out the wolf and took care of it. They're a passive tame and they love poop. I mean, it's in their name. I didn't have any ready at the moment, so spoiled meat would have to do. I cryopotted him just in time before getting stabbed. I had originally planned on going back the way I came, but the more I thought about it, the more I wanted to go around Blue Obelisk. It was about the same distance either way. Going to Blue Obelisk would allow me to gather more resources and hope that that Diplo was still in my trap I used for the Fancy Trike. Going back the way I came would force me to stay in the Redwoods area until I found a Diplo, and then a lot of the next few teams would be on the way back, but they're also close to my base. Choices again, Day 30 with 27 Dinos Tame isn't too far off, right? Day 31. I made the decision to keep going around to the island to the place where I had tamed the Paki Rhino, hoping that the Diplo was still there. The next tames after that were close to my base, so I should be okay. Waved to the sheep party as I drove by and figured I would collect the resources on the way back to the base. The beach whales had a lot of keratin, which I would make into cementing paste along with some oil. Another thing I did before leaving the highlands was to get rid of one giga, or at least in the best way I could. I wanted to do this so a higher level could potentially spawn. Easiest way to do this here is to just lure it out into the ocean where it'll drown itself, hopefully. I finally made it to Viking Bay by night, but the Diplo wasn't in the trap. Sometimes they can get stuck in a trap like this, but I was also away from the area for a little bit. I was disappointed and I thought about leaving, but then I saw something back in the trees that looked an awful lot like a Diplo. And it was! A 130 female Diplo to be exact. I couldn't recall if this was the same one from before, but it's all good and it worked out. You can knock them out and tame, but I decided to passively tame it. So I let it down to my boat, grabbed some regular kibble, mostly because I didn't want to take any longer than I had to, got behind her and fed her. If you get underneath, they can't push you. I named her Cuddles and Crypot her. Day 32. I just remember that there were beehives and vultures around here, and I also had some organic polymer. So I made myself some gilly. Ready to go, I found this 135 trash bird flying around. So I tamed her first. Tried to bowl her out the sky, but ended up shooting her to aggro, then bullet. Didn't take much to knock her out, and I almost killed this one too. I tamed her up with fish and named her Trashy. Then I headed over to the vultures, which I attempted to trap up with the tent, but I guess I misjudged since they weren't trapped. I probably should have gotten off the mouth for this. I attempted to try again, but then they started aggroing. They took a bit to lose their aggro, and I figured, okay, maybe I can get some honey. There were way too many bad things around, and even though the terror birds could potentially spawn here, there really wasn't any point of me waiting around for now, so I left. 
On the way back, I was able to make it up to the mountain near Blue Obelisk so I could gather as much crystal as I could carry. Finally, a good amount. As I went by this pump, I looked for a Diplococco, possibly tame. Oh no. I found one, getting eaten by a Sarko. Swim away, little guy. But on a good note, we had beer. Day 33. So the base needed some care, mostly the crops. I unloaded all the new teams and set up a spot for the dung beetle. If you give them poop, they'll make fertilizer and some oil. The amount you give is how much their weight is. I tended to the crops and I needed to do some stuff around the base, such as organizing, but I wanted to search for terraboards while it was still light. So I made myself a super cool desert armor and was off. I had to go to the location where I found the raptors, which cost some time. But the following dinos after the terraboard were located here as well. And look, I already found a couple. I spotted them from afar. A couple of terrorists terrorized the citizens of the beach, and one being a 145. One, yes. So it was my job to get them. They ended up separating. Guess they had a falling out, but it was better for me. I went to lead them in the pen, but these guys are fast, so make sure you got some distance between Oof. you and first. It went pretty smooth. I pulled the boat away just in case the other one got any ideas and I knocked it out. Gave us some cooked lamb since they eat meat. Spaz. I went back to get the doe dick I spotted earlier and they were getting attacked by all sorts of things so I had to look elsewhere. Went down a bit further and found another doe dick with an anki fighting some deodons. I tried helping them out and it worked. I know this doe dick just went through it but I needed it so I started shooting it. This was frustrating as these guys already have awful torpor. It goes down really fast so you need a lot of tranks. I was shooting this thing most of the night till I was like wait, use a magnifying glass. So I use it and it barely had done anything. I literally had pumped over 50 darts into this thing and just that. I came to the realization it was bugged out and I had to look for another. Day 34. I was super frustrated I had already spent so much time and ammo on a team that requires so much time and ammo. As I was about to pull away, I saw this little turd up and moving around. Usually they'll aggro to you if you attack. I just figured it didn't before because it was just attacked. So it slowly came into the pen. And I took it out, which took about another hundred darts. Jeez. I fed it regular kibbles since I didn't want to take up any more time. And then I went back home. I know I had collected a lot of metal on the way back, but I wasn't sure if it was enough for an industrial forge. I was very low on trank darts and I didn't want to resort back to using a crossbow as the teams got harder. Pretty soon we would have an Anki and a flyer, so I figured I'd just power through the next few days. Since I needed to craft more, I made a generator and finally a chemistry bench, so I wasn't wasting as much. Day 35. I headed out in the swamp to look for a Diplocalus possibly, and a Sarko for sure. It took most of the day, but I found a pair of Sarkos with one being a level 100. It was going to be hard to get him away from all the other stuff. But luckily, he wandered away from the other Sarkos so I could attempt to bring him over. I actually wasn't sure if he'd fit because Sarkos can't fit into a regular dino gate, and my pen was only one space larger. I shot him once with a bullet, and then the rest with the trank to lure him over, and I hope he went up the ramp. I don't think it worked because he came from out of the water. After figuring out where he was going to attack, he just started attacking the actual ramp, which worked well. When he started to try and run, he actually got on top of the boat, which uh, fortunately he wasn't attacking. Oh, that was terrifying. But I had to admit my butthole puckered a little here. He flew off the boat and I downed him with a dart. Is he out? Oh, he's out. Now, I didn't want to get out on foot anywhere in this place. I'd get attacked instantly. So I just drove the boat over him, and I was still able to access him while giving Can him some protection. <laughs> when he was up, I had him follow me out so I could cry upon him, and I got attacked by another oh, Sarko. Buddy. <laughs> and then a Baryonyx. Oh, no. I was barely in the water, and I got stunned. Sarko killed it and brought it out further so I could finally cry about it. I knew of a huge metal spot nearby so I gathered this up and this should definitely put us enough for an industrial forge. Day 36. Was still gathering into this day and headed back to the base. On the way I found a 145 Anki which is pretty straightforward. They're slow enough you can tame on foot but I lured it into pen so when it was knocked out I could drive it back. Metal Mary, now we're talking. Definitely a game changer. Gathered more metal than left right away to get our next team. A first flyer, a Lamantria. Didn't take long to find a 145. These guys will normally flee, and usually if it's a higher level, it will break out of a bowl before you're done. So to help with this, you can place a tent over them so they can't fly away. They berries and yay! It's our first flyer. 
Day 37. Close to where I was there, there was an island full of saber tooths. I found a 130 and lowered it in the pen with yay, which made things so much easier. I knocked it out and gave it lamb chops, and they took all of them. Greedy. Another orange creature. <laughs> there were plenty of pteranodons around my base here, so it was just a matter of time of finding the highest level one, since it was going to be my main flyer for now. I searched everywhere around my base, and the highest I could find was a level 100. So I killed the ones I saw, hoping higher levels would spawn. Then I found this 130 flying over the water right near my base. There we go. So I brought the boat over, hoping it would land on it, and it chose to land on the dirt. Whatever, this works too. They're easy. Bola, two headshots, out, fed some primed and tame. Sneaky. I was getting close to getting all the materials for an industrial forge. It was going to get made before our next team, which I wasn't thrilled about getting. Day 38. I had a tough time with the choice where to go for the Capros because of the next team's following it. Because I could go to the swamp, then drive back to the desert, or I could fly over to the black sand, then back. But then I felt I would have wasted more time. There is an area where swamp dinos were in the desert, so I could get a few teams done in that same area. So I thought on it while I gathered some more berries and did some more base stuff and then decided to go to the desert swamp. Once I reached the location, most of the swamp dinos were in the water, and I didn't want a repeat of the Sarko, so I looked for a capo that could possibly be on land. Made an attempt at a diplo I saw, but quickly lost it. I was beginning to regret the decision to come here. I actually had to go on a walk in real life to ponder what to do next. Day 39. After searching a bit more, I actually found a level 100 Capro on land I thought I could trap, but he got stomped out by a Parasur. I was finding it more difficult to see Capros in the water with the Pteranodon, so I started just looking under the boat. Problem with this is I couldn't find out the levels. I was so scared of getting grabbed by either Capros or Sarkos, and I definitely wouldn't be able to move faster than either of them in the water. Their aggro is huge, and so is their bite box. This was only a level 25, but at least I knew this technique had worked. I found another one, a 130 terrorizing the dinos in the water, and something in my head said, hmm, maybe if I put the ramp right in front of him, he'll just walk right up. Did I just scoop him in the boat? Did that work? I really did not think that would work, but I'll take it. Oh, it did. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Didn't have anything better than raw meat, but it'll do. I went further up to look for thorny dragons and found a 135 Diplo Callus, and I had one shot to pick it up or else it'd scurry away. I did it. Dropped it in the pen and started to track it out. They won't attack and they usually run away if you get close. They can also fit through a doorway, so if you trap them, make sure it's enclosed. I had some kibble for it, because honestly, I couldn't remember if they took a long time to tame up or not. While it was taming, I looked for thorny dragons in the area they should be in, and I couldn't find a single one. I was originally going to stay here, fly over to where the spiders were, then fly back to tame a frog after getting a thorny dragon. But I couldn't find any, and all the frogs were in the water swimming like ding-dongs, so it makes it really hard to tame them. Even though I just got two new dinos, I kind of regret coming here and decided to try my luck finding a dragon on the way back home. Day 40. I actually find many on the way back, just none that were high enough level. While searching, I found a lone 140 vulture I attempted to tame. I just said screw the tent this time, and I just ran up to it in success. Shortly after that, I had found a 100 thorny dragon on one of the surrounding islands pretty close to my basement. I had to be careful of the saber nearby, but you can outrun the dragon pretty easily. But their spiky attack does torpor damage. Even though they look like they might eat berries, they eat meat. He woke up on the way back and I named him Owl Lizard. Because they kind of look like a mix of an owl with a lizard. I was pretty sure of my course the next day and hope it would be as straightforward as I pictured. Day 41. Today was frog day, which I thought would be simple enough. I drove over by the swamp and searched for a good part of the day for a high level, and finally found a 135 on land around a bunch of pretty chill things. So this should be pretty easy, right? Nope. The stupid thing kept going in all sorts of directions when I was trying to lead it in the pen. It's hard to keep aggro on them because you don't want to be close to them when you're leading them. Their tongue attack does torpor damage, and I don't want me or Sneaky passed out in the swamp. After many failed attempts, I finally got it in. I'm glad I made the extra space in the back of the boat, or else I would have gotten knocked out. And because she destroyed my bed, no way of getting back easily. 
Unfortunately, frogs don't need very many tranks to down them. They can dish it, but they can't take it, I see. I had battle music as I sailed away, seeing that their friend took a ride along. I thought this was going to be a quick team, but with it being night now, I just figured I'd gather some metal. Day 42. I felt now was the perfect time to search for griffins. The canyon is a great spot to find many. As soon as I pull in, I'm like, oh, are we this lucky? Griffin right here, but the level was too low. Jeez, I know where to get a spino when I need one. I searched and searched the canyon all along the other spots. I knew a griffin could spawn. There was nothing but low levels. I decided to head back to the canyon since I had the best chance of getting a high level one there. Since they're not very strong and they get into fights with a lot of things that hit hard like Argies. So in the night I built a taming trap on one of the pillars to make sure I wasn't bothered by anything else. Day 43. Eventually my waiting paid off and I spotted nice. a 150 griffin. Super lucky. I led it back to the trap. And nothing crazy about taming these guys if you have a trap. You do need to let them bite you a little bit though to hold aggro. Once down, I fed it some prime and done. Now we could get around much faster. Their attacks aren't very strong, but we needed it for transport mostly. I had no idea what to name it. I originally was going to fly over to the highlands for my next team, but there was a huge party of spinos around my boat. Even though everything kind of freezes when you're out of render range, I didn't want to come back to them potentially being right on top of my boat. So I parked to a safer place before heading over to the highlands to look for sp spiders. On my way over a tree near Viking Bay, I had placed some tree sap taps so on my way back I could pick some up. I also stopped by the little lake in the snow to look for penguins to tame, but none were high enough levels so I continued on. It was night by the time I made it over to the Volcano Highland area and had a tough time spotting spiders on the black beach. I had hoped there were some in the highlands and there were not. Day 44. Spiders are a passive tame, so I had to make sure that the area was clear along with not aggroing the spider. I had bug repellent on along with full ghillie armor. I found a 135, but there were too many snakes and other things around. Plus, every time I landed on the griffin, it would aggro to me. Eventually, a 110 spawned in the highlands with no bounties around. I quickly ran up and fed it spoiled meat. I cryopod it because there was an Arthur right over the hill and I didn't want it spotting me. On my way back, I thought about taming bees, but honestly didn't feel like it at that moment even though I needed honey. I got some sap. Then I checked on the penguins. I lured any of the bad stuff away and I found a 135 adolescent penguin. You can tame the younger penguins. They would just start a maturity bar to adult once tamed. They're pretty annoying to tame since they die so easily. I had to wait for it to heal a little and still ended up killing it. So then I slaughtered every penguin there because I need polymer. I was going to let them all live and only take two, but this is the way it had to be. I continued this until things bigger and badder than me started spawning in, and then I took myself home. Day 45. I finally had enough to make the industrial forge. Place some foundations and place the forge. Yeah, it's going to be way faster now. The next team was close to my base, so I wasn't worried about finding one. I actually found a 150 megalodon in shallow water, which would be perfect to tame. I save you for later. The parasers on the safe island weren't high level, so I killed them and went to place an oil rig I had made earlier, hoping higher levels would spawn. I really should have done this earlier, but it's there now. When I came back, there were two parasers, a low level and a 115. I brought the griffin since you can shoot off the back, and honestly, I didn't want this thing destroying my boat. They kept getting caught on the trees and would eventually catch up to me, and then I just fly off. I think it took about 15 minutes for me to take it down, which is unfortunate since I wanted to try and get the next team done today as well. But it's okay, because I ended up getting some oil while it was teaming up. I brought her home and named her Twinkle, since I call all these guys Twinkle. It's just like an inside joke with my friends. I decided to do some base cleanup and upgrades. I put an industrial grill on the boat, since I don't know how many times I need to cook prime or mutton, and it took forever with my little campfire. It was very crowded, so I also started to move the dinos in a better order for more productivity. Day 46. Most of this day was spent looking for stuff. Barely found any calicotheriums and microraptors in the canyon. Even went to check on the penguins and there were none high enough. Eventually I head over to get, possibly get a bee tamed. The beehives on Ragnarok tend to be a little bit buggy since they spawn many on top of each other. I had brought my Dimorphodon to attack. The way you destroy a bee is you have to destroy the beehive and then a queen bee will pop up along with a couple of drones. I had brought my Dimorphodon to attack them quickly and he would break them. This took many tries to find one that worked. 
I'm not really sure what was broken, but eventually I found a queen. Make sure to have ghillie armor on and bug repellent, and I ran up and gave her some rare flowers. Day 47. Made my way back to the penguins and killed them all again. I went back to the canyon to look for poop throwers and found a 110. They are drunk, so just give them a beer and that's it. Gilly helps for the tame, but not really necessary. I don't know, she looked like a Tammy. On my way back to the penguins, I spotted a red drop, which I've kind of been neglectful to drops this whole time. There was also 135 Sasquatch, which I was a little mad about since I only brought stuff for the dinos I had planned on taming. As I waited for the drop to come down, I considered picking some berries, but the area was pretty dangerous. Well, the drop came down and I couldn't access it. I broke everything around it and I still couldn't access it. Super disappointing, but figured I'd get Bigfoot. Picked some berries, but the problem was an RG was very close by. I waited for a good bit before deciding to bail, but the big guy wandered over to me. He wanted to come home with us. I tamed him up and then he started walking away. Make up your mind, Bigfoot. After that, I headed to the penguins probably for the eighth time at this point and found a 135. Picked it up, brought it somewhere safe to tame just so I could kill it. Ugh, penguins are so stupidly weak and they're so annoying to tame. Luckily, there was another 135 I could tame and I did so with success. Finally, jeez. I gave her some prime. Then I went back to get another one of the opposite sex just so I could have babies for home for polymer. Yeah, brutal, I know. No more brutal than the genocide I committed every time I came to the Penguin Pink, though. There were a bazillion Pelagornis around my base, so on the way home, I bullet and tranked to 130. They go down pretty easy. Killed a manta for some fish and tame. They kind of look like rubber duckies because they float on the water. Day 48. My next team would be difficult based on location, so I took this time to prep. Collected resources all day to make more trank ammo and materials for traps which finally bumped me up to level 89, where I unlocked the industrial cooker, so it made me think about getting materials for that. Day 49. I thought it would take me one day to prep, but it took a little bit longer. I decided to take a break by going out and finding some stales to tame. I would have gotten some sooner, but I didn't have any honey. By now, the hive has produced enough for me to have two sweet veggie cakes, which is the only thing snails will eat. I flew over to the swamp and saved this 140 from a titanoboa, which halfway through shooting it, I regretted it. It was tucked up, so all these shots were hitting the shell, which offers more protection and reduced torpor. Eventually, I knocked it out, but it took longer than it should have and more darts than it should have. I had to name it Gary. Then I went to look for another just so I could breed them since they can do that now. And I find a 145 all squished up too. So I figured I'd just take it home and let it relax before trying to shoot it. It chilled up before I got there and this 145 took two darts as opposed to the 20 something I had pumped in the other one. Oh well. I got snails now, so I breed them all while collecting more resources. Make sure to spay them or keep them far apart because in order to get cementing paste from snails, they need to be set on wander, which also enables them to keep mating. I found this out the hard way. Day 50. At this point, I had tamed 50 dinos in the order of their saddles. So even though a few times it felt like it was slow, it seems like I'm making good progress. Not too much has happened on this day as I took another day to prep more for the underwater adventure. I wanted to make sure nothing went wrong. As I made as many trank spears as I could to help with the tame. Originally I was just going to take the griffin, but all this stuff was way too heavy so I had to take the raft, which took some time since I had to go a little past Blue Obelisk. Day 51. At almost high noon and I made it to where I wanted to set up my traps. I didn't want to lose any tame so I went in myself and figured I have a bed here so if something bad happened. I knew of a cave that was really safe to tame in, but of course there was a shark to greet me as soon as I made my way down. When you have flippers on, a lot of things can be outswim or at least moved out of the way of their bite. Not everything, but some things. I placed the chair down just in case I needed to eat or regain stamina. I had put a crate down so I could have all my building materials as it took a couple trips for me to get everything. I decided I wanted to tame an anglerfish first, so I made a trap similar to as if I was going to trap a flyer. A 2x4 with door frames and a dino gate. Anglers are like everywhere and their aggro is huge. I lead this one into the cave and it was a 110. I honestly didn't know at first since I was worried about things sneaking up on me, so that was just lucky. I then proceeded to trank it out using harpoons and crossbows. I almost killed it. I hate creatures that get so messed up from trank arrows. 
I saved the shark so I could get some prime meat off of it to feed it. Named her Sunshine. Look at that face. I then proceeded to use the trap, which I was going to use for the donkey, which wasn't my best. I had a hard time placing these, but it was basically five behemoth gates shut off on both ends with an opening large enough for the anglerfish to swim through. It started to get a little cold for me, so I went back to the surface to repair some of my weapons and make more trank spears and make superior kibble to tame. Day 52. So time to lure this big lady in the pen. I use rare flowers to help with aggro since these guys really lose interest real quick. And if you trank them, they tend to swim away right away. My hell was definitely puckered trying to close that gate. It doesn't matter where you hit them as their whole body is armor, so everything's reduced. But if it makes you feel better, avoid hitting their head. After many bolts and arrows and a few close calls, I finally knocked her out and fed her superior kibble, then headed up to the surface. I figured I could fly over to the volcano in the sand area to look for mantis. Manti? Mantis? I'm not sure what the plural is. I thought I'd try my luck again in the highlands since bugs are more spread out and I found a 115. For some stupid reason, I got excited and decided to jump off the griffin, but somehow I was safe? I landed properly, put bug spray on, then shoved a woolly rhino horn up its butt, and Zorak was mine. I didn't want to take the boat before, but I think it could actually be helpful for the next couple of teams if I could find what I was looking for. Day 53. I headed off to the area with the bug red drop since I saw some dire barrels there. I had the boat down below, and the plan was to lure it down the cliff onto the boat. Eventually, I found this 120 dire bear. It didn't go according to plan, and I just kind of chased it around with a griffin until it knocked out. Didn't want that because it happened to pass out near an RG, which tried to eat it, but I managed to deter it away. I used kibble since I didn't have any honey on me. Next up was the carnal we saw earlier. This actually worked out, and I was able to lure it down the cliff onto the trap. Not much of a threat once it's trapped, just knock it out and feed it meat. Fancy arms. Day 54. I left the boat by the swamp for the tame after this one. I flew over to the spot where the 150 megalodon was in the shallow water, hoping it didn't despawn and it was still there. They're much easier to tame in shallow water if they get stuck, and easier to put a trap up. So I put some gates around it so it wouldn't swim around, and used the trank darts to knock it out, which is a bit faster. Used kibble and got a perfect tame megalodon. Not sure if I was going to need it for this underwater adventures, but definitely a lucky find. Then I headed over to the swamp to look for a baryonyx. Day 55. They're pretty much everywhere here, so it's just a matter of finding a high level. Found a 120 terrorizing a pig, and it was easy enough to lure into the trap. You can't pull with these guys anymore, so this is probably the easiest way to get them down. They also eat fish, not meat to tame. Barbara the Berry. Heading back to base, I mainly made more of the same stuff. Narcotics, darts, you know. I did hatch some penguins for some polymer, but the moss chop didn't want to act right and kept running away. I'm not sure what was going on. Day 56. I headed over to the desert islands near me to find a thylacoleo. They're much easier to tame when they're on the ground and not in the redwoods. While I was looking, I found a pack of hyenodons. I left them leaderless and I dropped them in the pen. I attempted to tame it, but I spooked it, so I had to wait until it was normal again. So I went back out to find a thyla and found a 125. Figured I'd bring the boat around. The hyena down would have been chilled out by now. They're a passive tame and you have to sneak up behind them to pet them. Gilly helps, but it's definitely possible to still spook them. I got them and named them Buppers. Then brought the boat up to the side where the thyla was at and then lured it in the trap. Knocked it out and they have the cutest sleep animation. <laughs> Looks so peaceful. I only had raw meat on me, but it works. Spider Kitty. I wanted a proper kitchen at base, so I made an industrial cooker along with a fridge. Laid down some plumbing and wires and done. Day 57. I handled a few base things, then got the materials together to build a trap and made the next two saddles I would need. I headed off to the penguin area to make a trap, as it's the only place I could be in the snow and not freeze. My aim was to lead whatever down into the pen. I had seen Megatherium and Wooly Rhinos there before, so I was hoping to find a high enough level one. I found a 110 Megatherium. Had to clear out the area since these guys will barrel into everything and they're very fast. Didn't want everything aggroing that it hit. It decided to lose interest right at the trap, so that was annoying, but once it was in, it was just a matter of shooting it till it dropped. I brought some kibble along, so I used that. Next was a Wooly Rhino, which was just up ahead at 130. I carefully led them into the pen and knocked them out. This is a better trap for them than the Dino Kate since they won't fit through the doors. 
I gave it some kibble and once it was down, I checked my tracker for Pegomastics I had tried to tame back when I was taming the dire bear. So I figured I'd head over there, let him steal some of my stuff and got him. Yep. Day 58. Back at base, I made some more bug repellent to tame an Arthropleura. I was hoping there was one that I had spotted back when I was looking for Thylas and it was not. So this changed the plans a little. My next complete tames were in the same area so I spent the day making kibble and more darts and then headed over to the volcano area. Day 59. I found tons of Arthropleura here, even of a high enough level. That wasn't the issue. The issue was I couldn't find any that were alone and not near a ton of bad things. My griffin is still kind of weak and it doesn't take out stuff as fast as I'd like him to. I decided to try my luck in the highlands since there's usually less, but that was a bust. Instead, I tamed up one of those sheep that were having the sheep peach party. Easy enough. Just need sweet veggie cake. I headed back to the, where the bugs were at and after a bit found a level 100 Arthur that was in a pretty good area. It drifted away from its Arthur buddy, and I only had the mantis to worry about. Let's see how long it takes. I had applied my bug repellent to the griffin and myself, so we were unlikely to be detected. Ran up with some spoiled meat and tamed it. I actually never had a need to tame these guys, but they're useful for PvP raiding. Not really a bug person, but it's kind of cute. I headed back to an area where I saw a high level Tapihara on one of my many trips to the Penguin Pond. On my way I found a Megalosaurus, which is pretty lucky for us since it's the tame right after. I actually made a video before on taming Tapiharas, it's usually pretty simple. Not when they're flying and especially near danger stuff. So I need to use rare flowers so it would aggro to me. Though I had it when I bulleted it, I lost track of it since I got caught up with a dumb bug. Bugs. By the time I found it, the bullet had run out and I chased after it. I attempted to bullet it again and couldn't see where it landed. Definitely hard at night. They only need a few darts to the head to down them, but he escaped again. This was turning into a Quetzal style tame, since now it was near Argy's and I didn't want all those things aggroing me when I used the flowers. At one point, they got stuck and I thought I had it, and I probably should have bowled it then, but then it flew off and I completely lost it. That was super annoying since these guys are already a pain to find, so I don't think I could be that lucky again without searching for a bit. Day 60. So I was a bit annoyed, but I looked around for another Hatapehara and found a level 60. I kept searching the area, then deciding maybe I'll just get drops for a bit and then, you know who I find? This little shit. I figured I'd had to chase him down like a Quetzal and he led me through the snow where I started to die and then I didn't want to trank her out there and I kept chasing her until I was in a safe area. Kind of. Then it finally landed. So I went to bullet it and it fell off the cliff. This was ridiculous. Are you kidding me? Eventually it got stuck at a wall and I bullet it and it tranked it out finally. Finally. Then the stupid thing was stuck in the wall. So I had to do this weird balancing act in order to access its inventory. So stupid. Whatever. And difficult AF. At least the next one will be easy as I saw them on the beach before. Megalosaurus was super weak during the day and slow, so I didn't even need a trap for this one. I could literally stroll after it leisurely while it ran. I used kibble and that was done. I looked around in the snow areas I could tolerate for a potential deodon, but nothing. So I was going to need to bring the taming boat to the desert as it was a safer option than building a trap there. Did a few base stuff when I was back, named a few of the critters I collected, then I was off. Day 61. I had to go a little further than I wanted to, but I found a 130 day done. Leading into the pen was easy enough. It took more darts than I thought it would, but eventually it went down and it teamed up with kibble. As I drove back, I kept an eye out for any Basilosaurus, specifically a high level one I saw before when I was taming something a bit ago. It got a bit too dark to see, so I had waited out the night in my boat. Day 62. After a nice rest on the boat, I kept searching for Basilosaurus. I found a level 100, which was slightly disappointing since I saw a level 130 around this area before. For the sake of moving along in the challenge, I decided to tame this one, as I could always tame a higher level later if I found one. Taming them is pretty easy, as they're a passive tame, but you do have to get rid of the mantis surrounding it. Aggro one, and they will all eventually follow. I haven't got any eggs yet for exceptional kibble, which is what they require. So since they'll eat meat, I just use that. Yay! 
Now we get a rainbow whale, which makes me feel better about going on underwater stuff. They're a beast for underwater exploration. For the next team, I knew I had to make a small trap. I knew where there were plenty, but didn't want to get overwhelmed or run into anything bad while taming them. I set up my 2x2, two two, one high trap, and led this 130 beaver in the pen. I was honestly anticipating more aggro from the surrounding beavers, but they mostly didn't care until they wandered too close. Oh, and apparently sabers are here too and tried to mess with the beaver. I stayed on the griffin the whole time just in case something like this happened. Once down, I just used kibbles since I wanted this done quickly. Their torpor does drop pretty fast, so make sure to pay attention to that. Another wood collector to add to the ranks. Chucky. Day 63. This next tame would have been really useful for the last tame, but oh well, it is what it is. RG taming is next, which is pretty simple with the trap. I figured I could use the same track I used for the griffin since it works for flyers and there's plenty of RGs that spawn in that area. Super lucky with this and the first RG I saw was a 140, so that'll do just fine. I had to wait for it to drift away from the other RG near it, but led it into the trap with a pteranodon and then knocked it out. Use superior kibble and done. Heading back to base, a Brano was next and there were plenty near my base. They're pretty easy to tame if you keep your distance, stay either far away or up higher that it can't reach you. Figures, the guy was a 150 so it took a while to knock out but eventually it went down. I also tamed a level 15 Brano so I can make exceptional kibble as this was the first dino I tamed capable of producing eggs for it. The shark was trying to get a free meal and I had a hard time trying to get it without trying to kill the Brano. So I just dropped some berries in its inventory and tamed it up and it got out. Level 17. Good thing we're not using this one for anything. That's what happens when your dino gets hit after being knocked out. Day 64. Not much happened this day since the tame was going to be an underwater one. It seems to be the routine to craft and handle base stuff along with gathering any resources needed. At some point I needed oil and I was excited to take the donkey out with the rainbow oil to get some oil. Never used a donkey before for gathering oil, so that was pretty cool. I also wanted to get some levels in the Basilosaurus since they can be pretty OP once leveled up in the water. Day 65. Most of this day was spent doing a lot of things I did before, such as crafting harpoons, narcotics, you know, most taming stuff. I did make whatever kibble I could along with making some fertilized brano eggs so I could tame a titanoboa when I went by the swamp. Since the next saddle tame was a plesiosaur, I needed to make the saddle, but I discovered I didn't have enough pearls to do it. So back out this time I went with the anglerfish and rainbow whale for the levels. Anglers are the best at gathering pearls and it's pretty ridiculous. Back at base, once making sure everything was repaired and ammo was stocked, I was off. I decided to take the boat mostly due to the weight of the supplies as well as potentially taming the next team if I spotted it. I did stop by the swamp to get a titanoboa using the RG this time. Titanoboas eat fertilized eggs and the bigger the better. Found a 130 and a 140 together which was great since I didn't have to worry about the wrong one eating it since both were good. Easiest way is to drop the egg while on a flyer, but it has to be from your inventory. Once tame, I picked it up with the RG so I didn't have to step foot in the nasty nasty swamp. Day 66. Not much happened this day. I spent most of the day looking for a high enough level plesiosaur. Found a couple of close ones, but not high enough. Great thing about having the Blastosaurus now is I can safely kill jellyfish which give biotoxin, which means I can make bioshock darts, a better version of the trank dart, which will make taming a little bit faster. While I searched, I did find a high level Mosa and a squid near my taming pen, so hopefully they'll still be there when it comes time to tame them. It got too dark to search anymore, so I surfaced and spent the night gazing at the moon with Rainbow Whale while I fed her fish. Quite the evening. Day 67. Went down to search again. A tip for people who get turned around underwater. I don't eat everything I kill, and the bodies stay for a bit so you can follow the trail of dead bodies back to where you've been or to mark something for you since all the rocks can look the same. I eventually found a 120 plesiosaur. It was a long ride back to the pen. Picked up some sharks and even a mosa, but I got it in the pen. Because of the terrible turning radius and the AOE of a lot of underwater creatures, the mosa was stuck below, so I ate it, so it didn't potentially mess up my team. Rainbow Whale had a ton of health, so I left her in there and shut the door and proceeded to try and out the plesiosaur. Didn't take long and I tamed it up with superior kibble. Where I was at was pretty close to Viking Bay, so there's always some aloe pack in or near the bay. Moving along the coast, I found a 145. Pulled up the boat, let it in, 
and tranked it out while I destroyed half my boat. Used superior kibble and worked on replacing some of the stuff in my boat. Day 68. I call these guys fuzzy raptors, but a lot of people know them as tickle chickens. They're not really hard to find. They're pretty much everywhere, and I scoped out a 145. Brought the boat up, let it straight in, and tranked it out. I tried to do this as fast as I could since these guys can damage stone, but it does take a while for them to break it. Surprisingly enough, these guys are vegetarians. You wouldn't know it due to their bloodlust. So gave him some berries and he was tame. Now the next tame was going to be a bit of a pain in the butt as I would need to farm for it a little, so I figured this would be the perfect time to get a wyvern egg. I knew of an entrance where there was very few wyvern and you could access it on foot if you wanted to. I'm not doing that, but you can if you want some spice in your life. It's an entrance between the black and white sand near the wyvern trance on the top part of the map. Some eggs spawned down here, but it didn't look that way today. It's very low in here and sometimes the wyverns killed themselves in the lava. No matter how many times I steal an egg from any creature that requires this method, to tame one, my butthole always puckers. Especially since all the eggs I found weren't high enough until I found this 185 lightning. Almost perfect, but close enough. That'll do. I booked it out of there, but uh, here's something I think that needs to be talked about. I think out of all the wyvern parents, the lightning ones are the worst. Like they never care when you steal their eggs, but if I stole a fire one, then it's a problem. That ever happened to you guys? <laughs> if you oh. made it this far in a video, put it down in the comments that lightning wyvern make the worst parents. Anyway, being that nothing was chasing me, I had a moment thinking, hmm, maybe I should get a horse or maybe I should get more eggs. Then I figured I shouldn't impress my luck and I should head home with my new tames and hatch this baby. <laughs> As I passed Blue Obelisk, I checked on Nope and honestly stopped because I swore I left the scope here, but no clue where that thing's at, so I left. I parked the boat in the area where I would need it to be for the team after next and headed the rest of the way on my griffin. Day 69. Insert whatever joke you want to insert here. That's what she said. I gave the wyvern egg to Grumpy to watch. Dimetrodons work the same as air conditioners. Just level up melee and you can hatch pretty much anything. While waiting for that and some stuff to craft up, I went around giving names to, and saddles to all the creatures that didn't have any. I made a cannon and cannonballs to knock out a rock elemental. I also needed a couple of things to make a trap for one as well. And the baby wyvern had hatched and it was looking pretty cool. Good job, Grump. I thought about waiting till it was grown and taking it instead, but its stats were not so great, so the RG it was. I headed off to the desert. Day 70. My RG stats weren't where I liked them to be, so I easily killed an app after I get some levels. It helped a little, but the RG was still so slow. I found a few rock elementals at first, but pretty low levels. Oh geez, I wonder who that could be. Then I found a rock elemental who thought he was a bird. Are you serious? It was very weird, but it was a 135. Am I supposed to get you out? I looked around the area to see if I had a safe place to actually put a trap, and it wasn't really comfortable anywhere near it, so I decided to keep looking around Drinous. and found a 150 in a nice flat area with a cliff. This will do great. So I set up my trap. Lord it over and knocked it out. It's been a while since I've done this and I think the last time I actually had a friend to help. This method is very annoying since you can accidentally kill it. I think next time I'll use a rocket launcher. I didn't have its kibble so I fed it sulfur and when it woke I named it Dwayne. You kinda just have to. Done with that, I was back to base. Day 71. Stayed around the base this day. Crafted a few things such as kibble and shock darts. These would help take the dinos down faster. I used up all the biotoxin I had and I was a little bummed I didn't have more. I need to get some more on the next ocean trip. Once stocked up, I headed to where I parked the boat. Day 72. There was plenty of spinos down this cannon, so I just had to find a high enough level one. I found a 145, which I didn't feel like using all those darts for, but I also didn't feel like looking for another one. I wasn't actually sure if he could fit in the boat, but it didn't matter since I couldn't get it in anyway. He brought his friend along and he started attacking my boat. I had to wait for them to de-aggro and try it again. I normally just find a high area and then shoot down on them, but it kind of only works in a more cramped space. They lose aggro and tend to run away a lot shortly after being tranked. I would just have to chase it around until I was able to knock it out. It eventually separated enough from the others and I proceeded to shoot it. Then it got in a fight with a baryonyx and I had to help it then. There was a point where it got pinned by a diplo which worked out pretty well. Thanks buddy. Then it was in an awful area and I didn't want it to drop down in. 
Eventually, I found the tiniest piece of land to pass out on. I used exceptional kibble. And some piranhas tried to get it, but I scared them off. While they were teaming, I went over to the Volcano Beach area to get a Megalania. I found a level 100, which I almost fried her butt because I forgot I was on a wyvern and the buttons were a little bit different. Luckily, that didn't happen and I picked her up and brought her back to the boat. The Spina was up and playing with a piranha. Didn't want him attacking while I tried to tame the Megalania, so I cryopod him then knocked out the Megalania. I used some cooked prime meat I had in the preserving bin and headed back towards base. Day 73. I parked the boat across from my base as I remember seeing a tech rex a while back that was a high enough level and I thought it'd be cool to have at least one tech dino. This area actually had a lot of rexes and I figured if I couldn't find the tech, any of these others will do. I found him though. Now the hardest part of taming a rex is their attention span is awful. Like they will literally eat anything that's near them and head in that direction so you have to constantly poke them. So I shot at him and at first I didn't even notice the friend that he had. Where'd you come from? Uh, level 25? Oh. Cool. Come over here. Jeez, I didn't even see you. So we're bringing both of them. But she quickly left because you know, Rex attention span. I eventually led him down to the boat. I almost thought I was going to knock Kidding him out me. before he even got there. It took a couple tries to get him in the boat. Oh, get in the boat. Come on. Go. There we go. But eventually it was in and then it was smooth from there. I gave him some kibble to tame up. I believe this was my first tech rex and he looked pretty awesome. I had seen this one Quetzal many times when I had made my trips to the Penguin Lake and it was still there. I was going to make some spikes for this one but I remember I had unused dino gates that would work as well. So I started to shoot it. This can be done with other methods and dinos but shooting it off the back of the griffin is the easiest especially solo. I also have another video doing this method with a Tapehara if griffins aren't available on the map you're playing on. Unfortunately, this process still took 30 minutes in real time. I regretted using so many shock darts on the other dinos because I ran out and I had to switch to regular darts. But I had to keep stopping because almost every area this Quetzal flew over was terrible. I went to the canyon, then near the volcano with all the bugs and carnivores, then over the Get ocean with the so ocean. many sharks, then back to the volcano. Like, actually over the lava. Then it was over the wyvern trench. So every time I had to stop shooting it and follow it until it was in a safer area. They tend to fly really low when they're about to pass out. Yes. Yes. When it finally did, it couldn't have picked yes. a better spot. The somewhat safe highlands. I still put gates up because I had to go find some prime for it since I didn't have any kibble. Ugh, glad that was over. Day 74. Since I was in the highlands, I decided to see what the Giga situation was like. The one by the redwoods despawned, but the one I had let out before was still dying in the water, but bloody. So I thought I could finish it off, and it ate everything and healed itself up. So I let it out in the middle of the ocean, hoping that was the last I'd see it. I spotted a 140 horse on the way back, and I picked it up with the wire. Dropped it in the pen, which you can do if you want a more controlled tame. Because this was a time challenge, my taming was turned up, so I didn't get the little mini game that comes with taming horses. Essentially, you sneak up to feed it a carrot, then hop on and feed it again when it prompts. If you're not in a pen, you will run all over the place into all sorts of dangers. Spent the rest of the day farming and crafting things to go underwater or to tame a mosasaur. Day 75. I took the whale out to the underwater pen, hoping to find the high-level mosasaur I encountered earlier, and it was pretty much right outside the cave. So I let it in and trapped it. At first, I expected it not to be able to bite the whale, but it could. I figured Rainbow Whale would be able to tank it. Not too far in, though, the, the whale started to get bloody, and so I got a bit nervous and tried to cryopod it, and it didn't work. So the only thing to do was to quickly knock it out. I also stupidly left everything on the whale, which I couldn't access, so I only had the weapons and ammo that were on me. My harpoon gun broke, and I think the upgraded crossbow came through for me in the end. Finally, I went down and I used Kibble to tame. Oh, you're good. You're good! <laughs> While I was down here, I needed more biotoxins, so I cryoed the Mosasaur and proceeded to kill a few jellyfish. On land, I searched for a little bit for anything like a monkey or a kentra I could tame. 
Oh, come on. Oh, I found one, and a pack of hyenodons killed it. Oh, it turds. So I demolished them. The hardest part of a lot of smaller creatures was just being able to find them. Day 76. First part of this day consists of me doing base things along with making some more shock darts since I had some biotoxin there. I unloaded all the dinos that were in the cryopods and blah, blah, blah. Next tame required extraordinary cover, but you could also tame it up with some crime. You debated making a trap since you tyrannos can't be picked up by anything but a squid, and I don't know the mountain squid. So I visited the penguin lake since I had trapped there already and thought maybe I could lure one down from there. The ones I found were almost there, but not quite it. I figured while I was this close to the wyvern trance, I'd grab some eggs safely going the way that I went before. No higher levels, but that's okay since I can use these for kibble. I also checked around the first snow trap I had made back when I was taming a mammoth, and it was very cold along with not finding any UTs there. So I figured I would check the desert the following day. On the way back home, I found a level 100 Kentrosaurus, which was great since I didn't really expect to find one there. I dropped it in the pen and tranked it out. Never had a reason to tame one of these before, so this is my first time seeing one up close, and uh, I guess they're pretty cool. Day 77. Made some kibble, then headed out to the desert to search, and that's about all that happened this day. Found more UTs in the snow, but none were high enough level. I decided to liberate the Carnos from the UT overlords, and some of the Carnos really got liberated. Day 78. A lot more searching with no luck, and eventually I found a micro after the same. You can bowl with them, but it only took two darts to knock it out. They eat rare flowers. When it woke up, it immediately got in a fight, so I had to grab it up. I figured I'd give it some time for things to respawn, so I headed to the Redwoods in hopes of finding something to tame. Day 79. This day was a bust as well. I continued looking for UTs along with any other creatures I haven't tamed that didn't require a saddle. Day 80. Then, finally, after years, I mean days, of searching, finally. I finally Jeez. found a 115 UT. So I had to build a 3x3 pen for it. His minions must have been tired of his crap because they stood there the whole time patiently as I built it. Someone else who stood there patiently was a rock elemental and he had a buddy. Jeez, that could have been really bad. I didn't even realize they were there. I led them off a cliff and proceeded to leave the UT in the trap. Pretty straightforward from here. I decided to head back, and I felt super what? lucky when I found this 145 Perlovia. I'd been looking all in the Redwoods for one, and this is honestly the first one I've seen all game. Lucky. I was close to the UD pennant, but I figured I could just bring it back home. Yeah, that was a mistake. I thought I had dropped it in the taming boat, but that didn't happen, so it began to run amok and tack me in all my teams. I thought I could bowl it, and it turns out you can't. I didn't want him to kill any of my teams, specifically the tinier guys, so I made a choice to have everyone attack. That sucks. <laughs> easy come, easy go, I guess. Get wrecked. Day 81. I headed over to the spot where I had tamed most of the big water dinos since I remember seeing a high level squid over there. A 1352 so. They're fairly easy to tame. They're a passive team that only eat black pearls. You need to be on a mount that the Tusa can grab up, which is why I chose the Mosasaur. You also need a mount that has a lot of health depending on how long the team takes, as it must be able to withstand the Tuso's attacks. Once grabbed, just go up to its mouth and pop a pearl in. Now that that was done, I decided to go on a baby hunt. I had quite a bit of small and shoulder mount creatures that I needed to tame. The hardest part about these guys was finding them. I was mainly searching the rivers for otters or Hesperonis and I had no such luck today. Day 82. I don't know if this is really cheaty, but at some point I decided to turn off the ground clutter, which made it much easier to see the little guys. I found a 135 compi that I had tranked out and this time I had prime meat available. The worst part of it was I almost killed it since I had to shoot it a, a couple times to keep it asleep. Normally you shouldn't do this since it will make taming effect in this trash, but it worked out since I was just taming it to check it off the list. And day 83. Search forever to find an Archaeopteryx. Knock it out and they eat chitin. Pretty easy. Day 84. More searching and nothing. Day 85. Searched and searched some more and finally found a monkey. They passively tame easy enough with berries. It helps to wear gilly though as they're pretty skittish. Then I started one of the worst tames ever. I found a Hesperonis. Little demon bird. These are also a passive tame that involve you killing a fish and then dragging it over to the Hesperonis to feed it. Their temperament sucks, but it does help if you have gilly on. Sabertooth salmon seemed to give the most taming, but it wasn't enough. So I went home to get the Ithiona's trash bird. 
These guys have the ability to hunt and catch fish and then bring them to you, resulting in a buff that will raise the quality of the fish. Because this was a time challenge and I had turned my taming settings up, even with the trash bird and increased taming, this still took almost a day and a half in game to do, which is equal to an hour and a half in real lifetime. These guys will give you golden eggs, which are used for the highest tier of kibble, but not mine so much because it was a boy, so rip. There happened to be an otter in the same area who was tamed in exactly the same way, but it's much easier to do it. Day 86. Now having an otter, it allowed me to tolerate the cold areas a little bit better. So I tried my second time at taming a Perlodia. I found a 145 on the yes. edge of the snow and redwood and dropped it in a nearby taming bed. It took a couple tries, but eventually it was in. At this point, it's a simple trank out tame. I was covering the whole map, searching for the last remaining creatures I needed. Unfortunately, I hadn't seen any Gigas or Titanosaurs. I found a Trudon that I attempted to tame. This is a weird tame as you must sacrifice your own tame in order to tame it. The more XP you get for that creature, the more your taming bar fills up. I hatched a lower level Wyvern and I threw it in. They usually don't aggro to your creature so you kind of have to insert yourself into the mix. Unfortunately, I ran out of time and I would have to try again on the following. Day 87. I didn't want to risk despawning the Trudon in the trap, so I stayed at base and gathered resources for more tranks and cannonballs. When night came, I tried to tame the Trudon again. It took some dancing on the wyvern, but I managed to kill it and it was tamed. Sorry, little baby. Day 88. Into the water for the final time to find the magical tame the Lypurodon. These guys are a rare temporary tame. They don't spawn in high levels. They're usually no higher than level 5. They are friendly unless you're riding a mount, then they tend to be a little jealous. They are a passive tame as well that eats honey. So pretty much just like every other passive tame, put it in the last slot and then feed it. You only get 30 minutes with this one, but it provides you with a lucky buff that helps you get better loot and drops. While I was in the ocean, I needed to tame my last underwater creature, the electric eater. They have a huge aggro, so the hardest part about taming them is making sure nothing else interferes. After clearing the area of squids, I let them come to me one at a time till the one I wanted was left. Accidentally, I tamed a lower one, which made it a little annoying to tame the one I wanted since it was in the way. But the easiest way to tame them is to let them shock you, and then while they're recharging, get off your mount and feed them. They are a passive tame that likes to eat biotoxin. And with that, we are done in the scary ocean. I brought all my new buddies back to base where I continued the craft ammo until we had to say goodbye to our magical friend. Hi, buddy. Day 89. From one magical beast to another, I had found the Unicorn of Unicorns, a perfect 150 unicorn, which I promptly brought back to base. They tame up in the exact way as a horse by shoving carrots up its butt, and then you have a happy unicorn. I wanted to take advantage of a loot buff I had received, so I flew around the map specifically looking for a better long neck rifle, since the next team would take a ton of darts to take down, and the better your weapon is, the faster it gets to out. I had frustrations with red drops during this entire playthrough as it seemed like every single one on Ragnarok was bugged into the floor. This was a taming challenge and I had no desire to do any caves to try and get better blueprints, so I was just going to make do with what I had. Day 90 through 91. I eventually found a 115 Giga in the Highlands with a red color I had never seen on regular Giga before. They usually have the ugliest green on them, or brown. Now, I could have edited this part out, but I think part of this game is going with the flow no matter how much you plan. I set up a Giga Trap that's a pretty popular one, consisting of four metal dino gates and a bear trap. One of the gates should be placed at a 45 degree angle as you lay the bear trap in the middle. It took a couple tries to get the Giga in Come since on. they lose attention pretty quickly. Once trapped, you're supposed to place the gate behind the Giga to trap it in. Well, this happened. Oh no. It's been a bit since I've done it this way and I thought I had more time for the trap. It's only about 10 seconds. I didn't have enough things to reset the trap, and I didn't want to go all the way home and risk the Giga despawning, so decided to shoot it off the back of the Griffin. This is why I prefer ramp traps, where they're contained in the box, but they're a little bit more expensive than me. So when it comes time to tranking things out, you kind of just have to weigh what you like to do as opposed to what's actually called for in that particular situation. 
While taming this Giga, I probably went through every single way to tame something from Ark. I chased it down. I floated over it and shot down. I found a high enough area to shoot it from. I even shot it once when it wandered in a cave. It went in and out a few times, actually. And eventually got stuck in the cave. I was afraid that it was going to come back out at any moment, but I kept at it. Went through almost three rifles, hundreds of darts, and a few arrows, but she finally went down. Yes. Oh, and here's the cave I use. Uh, can fit a Giga inside, confirmed. I took her back to base, and she was done taming and named her Big Red. Now, for the final tame, I would need to prep a little more. So I got my Quetz a platform saddle. Day 92 to 93. These days are spent gathering resources for our Titanosaur saddle. It's very expensive along with the items needed to tame it. It's a knockout tame that you have to knock out with cannonballs, which are also expensive. I set up my Quetzal platform with a cannon and first had boxes, but later decided to use the RG as it could hold a little bit more and not be on the actual platform saddle. Day 94 to 96. Time to take on the OG Titan, the Titanosaur. I found one around Green Obelisk and I lit my first cannonball rip and a miss. This was going to take a bit, but once I figured out the pattern, it was a bit easier to hit. And I got some good hits in and I knew this because I had turned my damage numbers on to know if I had actually hit it. I found it easiest to aim the cannon down once and then wait for the Titanosaur to turn, waiting for it to show up in the view space underneath the cannon. I want to say it was almost a guaranteed hit every time. You cannot trap the Titanosaur as it will stop taking torpor. It has to be in motion to tame. Now, I had spent over three hours taming this thing on this particular map. I had a few problems with the creatures being bugged out while I was taming like the Dodicarus. Single player Ragnarok has plenty of buggy things in and the dinos weren't exempt from this. So I thought maybe it was the map. The problem wasn't hitting the dino, but the Torpora wasn't the full Torpora cannonball should give. It's supposed to give 1200 and I would get 400 with the Torpora quickly dropping, which is also not supposed to happen. I actually tried to tame a titanosaur on another map thinking maybe this one was bugged and I encountered the same problem. So I had to go to the internet and many other people had experienced the same exact problem. So this being my last dino, I had tweaked my service settings to combat this fast draining Torpor bug and after a few tweaks I ended up killing the titanosaur. No. In total, I probably spent about 8 hours trying to resolve this issue, trying it out on various maps, settings, and even methods. I did manage to tame it on one test, but this method wouldn't work as I didn't have the available engrams and resources to, to make this happen on Ragnarok. After killing the Titanosaur, I felt super defeated and bummed out, as I thought this would be an epic way to end this challenge, and on day 96 I considered giving up. But seeing as this was a problem many people had encountered in single player, and me wanting this to be a taming guide for all players that could follow in single or even a group, I knew I had to find a solution. So with much testing, I believe I had found the solution to this problem. Day 97. This was the day I was going to finally tame this beast. I had flown out to the desert where you can find these guys sometimes roaming out in the open desert. I shot it in the face and boom, it was out. They instant tame as soon as you put the saddle on. Now, how did I do this? Well, get a load of this first. Are, are you serious? <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. So I had to find another and do this again. Luckily, I had figured out how to one shot a titanosaur. I do not recommend doing this for every dino only for the Titanosaur or possibly any other dino that has a difficult knockout method. What I did was I had to change my settings. You want to make the dino resistance high. After much testing, I found the number 160 to work. Since Titanosaurs on regular settings don't spawn higher than level 5, this should be okay. What this setting does is it makes any damage to the dino do more damage, which means more torpor will happen as well. I also changed the wild dino torpidity which is in the advanced tab. This multiplies the amount of torpor 
a dino will receive when getting hit. I tried putting 100, but it makes it just 99.99999. You know. Feel free to tweak these settings if you want to hit it more than once and chase it down. Another titanosaur was in the desert and I was able to hit it once with it instantly knocking out. Notice the damage numbers are way different from before. Pop the saddle on and make sure the quetz was grounded. And I had my last and final tame on day 97 of this 100 day challenge. The titanosaur is a temporary tame lasting less than 24 hours unless you check the box off in your settings that says allowed raid dino feeding. This setting will allow you to keep it permanently. I might get a lot of flack for this, but I'm saying this right now. There is no way anyone has ever tamed this on solo single player without messing with the settings drastically as I did or without using mods. I've seen videos, but you know, notice the cuts guys, you know, the cuts that never show the Titan getting hit and actually dropping. This actual method is the correct way to do it without using tech but the Torpor shouldn't be dropping this fast. I wasn't the only one who experienced this, but if you feel like I cheesed it, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. And if you watched everything up until this point and saw every single tame that I did in this whole challenge, use the word Pitasaur in the comment. It was a colossal pain in a butt, if you know what I mean. The Titanosaur could be a fun and challenging team to acquire, but like everything in ARK, they tend to neglect single player playthrough. And I feel that this isn't an issue on official servers or even a dedicated server. Single player always gets forgotten. And during this playthrough, I had many Ragnarok specific bugs I encountered. And for anyone who says, where's the bat? Yeah, well, that was one of the many bugs on this map. They're not a tameable creature on here because Ragnarok said no. Anyway, enough pooping on Ragnarok. I do thoroughly enjoy this map. It's a very fun map to play on. I just wish it was player friendly. <laughs> Day 98 to uh, 100. So I sat around for two days with too many dinos on a tiny island waiting for the 100 days to be up. <laughs> no, seriously, I beat it. I didn't need it. This whole playthrough was done without mods, but this was the only mod I had used just so I could transport the dinosaur, since you cannot cryopod a titanosaur. Plus, I wanted to quickly make my dinos more presentable for the end. I actually had a lot of fun with this challenge as it was a way I had never played ARK before. I had been playing it for a long time. It forced me to think a few steps ahead aside from just thinking about the current action that I was doing. Due to the levels or items I had, taming certain dinos it wasn't always the best way, but I hope it can serve as a guide for people who are not riddled with tech tier or end game items. The early game struggle is definitely a struggle and it forces you to think a bit creatively, which I believe is one of the reasons many of us love this game. When I first started it, it honestly was just a challenge to see if I could tame everything in order. But as the challenge went on, it gave me some ideas for possible future 100 days videos. I would do a few things differently if I had done it again, and only a couple of regrets. As most of you know, this isn't every single creature in ARK. So if you would like to see a video like that someday, let me know down below on what map and rules you'd like me to play on and set. This video wrapped up on day 97, which is 97 real life hours of constant no AFK play Plus the extra research I had to do puts this over a hundred hours on top of the voiceover and editing and yeah, more hours. So if you enjoyed any part of this video, please give a like. And if you stayed around this long, you know, you should, uh, you know, probably subscribe. I make a lot of art videos and content. So yeah, if you like those things, hit that button and let me know what your favorite dino team was. I like helping out with games like this. So check out my social links where I have a discord that's free to join. Thanks for watching and happy team.